what is up people how's it going this is Bharat and welcome back to yet another video we are on day zero really interesting to uh, share with you guys that we are going to be doing a flutter versus kiwi challenge and for this day zero video we're going to be building the server part so this video is going to stand uh, like a separate completely separate video not probably linked with other videos but also want to make sure that i might be changing few things along the series as well so if you're interested watch the entire series this is this like i said is going to be standalone video so let's get this thing started i do have my uh, virtual environment and things uh, set up so basically if you see here this is going to be my uh, pie charm and uh, i'm going to do probably what you call as like a pomodoro style of coding here i might say some things i will just uh and make you guys understand what is happening and we'll just code silently for the next hour and a half or however long this takes to build so what exactly is the requirement for this one i so I, I quickly jotted down the requirement uh if you want to like see here uh this is going to be the requirement oh my god i threw the pen out anyway so this is going to be the requirement i'm not sure if you guys can see I'll try to put it up somewhere around here. So what exactly is the requirement? The requirement is that uh, we're going to be using, uh, we're going to be building a server that's going to be useful for a bank uh, application. The bank application will have a login page and it will also have a spend history kind of a functionality, credit card history functionality, and also do some transfer money functionality. So all of that are going to be the part of the functionalities of this, uh, this server. So what we need for this thing to is, uh, build is that we need to uh, probably work on uh, creating the login portion first because that's going to be taking some time and uh, probably this is already something we have done in the previous tutorial so it's going to be a little bit easier if you're following me from that so the login part first followed by the spend history part uh, credit history and uh, probably the transfer money portion at the last this is going to be the uh, four different sections or four different uh, modules that i want to be building let's get started uh, i have the pie charm here so pie charm enrollment is already loaded up i have the all i have all the things installed uh, already make sure to do that as well so you need a fast ap installation you need the uv con installation you'll probably also need uh, Jinja 2 installation and AIO files and possibly you'll also require uh, additional stuff as well. So everything that you have done so far, uh, I've got that thing installed into my virtual environment. Do that as well. So let's get started. Uh, let's get starting. Uh, get started the coding part. All right. So first thing is we'll start working at the fast API. So I might also require like I might use the stack overflows as well and uh, probably get the basic portion from there. This is going to be the template. So from fast API, we're going to be importing the fast API and things like that. We need to create the app and stuff like that. We'll also require body request. All right. Nothing for us. BDY. It's body. All right. So let's go build the app. Fast API off and uh, first thing is going to be the add get so uh, we'll probably go for the basic one itself home and the home is going to be taking we'll take probably nothing actually Let's say home we will return import we'll return um ping. Right, so every every directory as such like every server does have this ping and pong so you can call it a ping something like that so this is basically to uh, ensure that our server is up so that we can use it in case in our application to check if our server is working so i'll just call it a ping so that that's going to be our uh, endpoint so let's let's quickly test it out this is nothing actually uh, you'll be calling it as uh, uv con uh, main is going to be the app all right let's fire this up let's fire it up okay okay so this is going to be it uh says nothing is there so i need to try ping all right so pong is coming out amazing uh what i expected all right so the ping is done uh let's start with the login portion uh login app part so what do we need for login app part we do require the password auth to bearer and the password auth to bearer is similar to this one i guess so this is where we took it off from the uh, previous one as well we learned it as part of the tutorial as well so what we need is to have the uh, OAuth to password bearer and OAuth to request form uh, we don't need a request form here per se because uh, this is just going to be the requirement like user is going to pass it as part of the rest api uh, like they're going to make the request and we're going to rec uh, return the uh, password or bearer 
and we need to return the token as well like we need to return the token url and the token probably i'm thinking let, let's keep it as like a simple token at this point of time let's not complicate things so what do we need first of all uh, i'm also not going to be having a user db and stuff just a simple json file uh, from that we can pull out and check if the user is there or not uh, so we need the definitely the login portion and the login portion is going to be or to password request form and depends and things like that all right so this is what i'm going to try to build uh, let's let's do that i'm going to have that in the separate uh, uh, terminal i'll try to write as and discuss it as well so what's, first thing we need is to make sure to import the from fast api or security we need to import uh, OAuth through password bearer and OAuth to uh, request form. All right, so we got in the request form and you need to say what is going to be the OAuth scheme. So what scheme is going to be, uh, it's OAuth to password bearer and uh, it's going to be token url is going to be i'll just call it token as well like i don't have any have to do anything separately different all right so token is there and we got now build it um let's quickly generate the post part here so app dot post i'm going to be saying it's going to be the token so dev.login this is where the login portion happens right uh we'll have the form data um, uh, oh, or uh, to request form, request form, and we'll also be requiring saying it depends. Depends is not that, so depends is coming as part of the import from uh, the base itself. So it's going to be put here. Depends, and uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. Depends on the what scheme, and uh, pretty much yeah, depends on the what scheme and what else do we have. let's check uh, what the form data is this form data will probably be the username and bank password so print the form data and let's return the access token so the uh, the expectation is that from the token we're going to be returning uh, access token and uh, I'll just call it as something for now and followed by the token type it's going to be better All right, so the access token here is empty, but I'm not going to leave it empty uh, because uh, ideally what you will do here is we'll have like an encrypted uh, uh, data, probably an encrypted password and you'll generate a token for session token and send it out. That's what you poss possibly do. But uh, let's not confuse things here. Let's 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 say that the user, whatever the user form data comes in, uh, we're going to be now checking if the user is in the DB. And if the user is in the DB, let's return a simple access token like uh, possibly something like this. Um, simple access token, probably uh, possibly the username itself, right? That will make our life so much easier. So if the username is there, probably this is not the good way to do it. But I'm not going to be talking about anything else this is going to act as a very simple login setup and not something complex uh, so yeah this is enough i think uh, we'll have this part done and this is this logic here is going to be to uh, check if if the username is in the db and the password matches this is a very very important step so we're going to be doing that i'm going to use the json file instead of a db so that's the login portion but we're not done here so we need to have something that is going to trigger this let's say that i'm going to be in the second step uh, asking for a spend and the spend is going to check if the token is there and only then it will go inside nobody can directly call the spend and in order to do that they, the person has to first enter the username enter the password and go in but let's say that the user uh, somebody has already hacked my system and they know that the access token is always going to be the username and they get access to the username they can easily do that but i'm not going to talk about all that just a simple like a local host setup so that like i said you're testing the flutter and the uh, uh, kiwi uh, md not the server itself all right so this is it uh, login portion is done we now will be requiring to build a simple one to test if this thing is actually working This is not a depends here. All right, so depends will come probably from here. Let's say that app uh, dot get. I want to test if uh, test something like uh, 
uh, spend history right spend uh, history this is what i want to test them i'm not sure what right the logic inside but the logic will look something like this spend history and the first thing will be um, probably the, the the token the token would be a string that will depend on the what scheme so when you depend on this this is probably depending on this portion and this is actually looking to ping the token and get the token and that's what we're going to do all right so let's let's move on we're going to be writing the spend history logic here spend history uh, logic and we need to have a mechanism to convert our token to url and username and username to token but since we know that the token is already username probably you have to solve that portion all right so pretty much this should work uh, i'm going to be writing some logic here print uh, probably called as uh, uh, spend history and stuff right so let's test it out uh, i have the uv con already set up let's test it out and fire this up hopefully you guys can see it i'm not sure if you guys can see it uh, let's, let's see if you can see it okay this is this is the this is the biggest one okay it's not getting bigger than this okay let's go here go to uh, redog fire this up okay let's go to docs itself i, I don't like this redog much okay it has the ping nothing is required for the ping uh, just to check if the server is up we're not going to be having any kind of login part let's authorize it now let's say the user is by this time the user any any user can be authorized right um, but let's let's try it out let's say the bank user id is something like this user id uh, user id is uh, probably um, buu157 something like that 157 157 this is going to be user id for the bank the password is going to be something i'm setting let's say bharat123 uh, dollar or bharat123 and nothing else is required let's see all right so it has generated the token for me and the token is you can see from here it's actually printing the token where is it printing the token uh, form data is being printed i can print the username i can print the password and the token is also going to be there all right so now let's close this up we are now authorized and meaning that we have already logged in and i'm going to be dying to get this now i'm just trying to try it out execute it right nothing is happening it's actually letting me inside it's actually printing it as well there is no kind of a error being thrown or saying unauthorized let's check this out let me log out and go back and try it out now and it should probably throw a log unauthenticated okay unauthenticated error is thrown meaning that i'm not logged in extremely good we have completed the login part but not exactly we need to now check if the username is present in my json file let me quickly create a simple file uh, let me create a file i'll call it as uh, user db uh, dot json all right cancel all right so user db dot json is probably nothing simple it's going to be simple json file and the username is going to be there followed by the password all right so this is going to be a very interesting one now i i need to have a sign up logic logic basically if you see any server that will be sign up logic the user gets signed up all of those things happen but since we are actually going to be building a say a bank server meaning that the bank will have the control of you who the user is it will create the first username for you so you don't need to think about the sign up logic now just the login portion so we need the username and the password which we are going to be setting so let me set the username for this let me set it as bar uh, one two three four as the username and the password is going to be uh, coder monk this is going to be the password right followed by let me have few additional things as well so this is going to be the user key basically this is a json file but access a simple dictionary we will improve this if required in the upcoming um, videos and if required as part of the upcoming videos right all right so let's say let's change it as uh, something like this post uh, 1872 password will be pause uh, one five five so that and change this again here iot uh, five one two and this will be internet one one and the password here is going to be uh, change the username username is going to be probably uh, friends reunion i don't know this will be a good password i'll have it as uh, friend uh, 188 
and throw in the friendly newness password all right so we have the basic username this is how it will be but not exactly it will not be how it will be it will have a lot of information like when was the username created when was the user uh, allowed inside and things like that this is going to be user db.json so we can easily read it now by just importing json and uh, pull the file and we can read it right so what we'll do is first thing we'll load the file uh, json data is equal to json dot dump load sorry it's not load we need to read it from the file so uh, with open we have the file which is going to be user db.json uh, read as a json uh, file uh, we got to like load it now this is not load and json file all right so the user now has the json data if it is not having the json data it will throw an error we can either like okay we'll now it's check if the json data is there what i want to do is i want to check if the username is present so if the json data that get i'm now trying to get form data dot username so if the username is there that means that i'm able to uh, probably fetch the password if the username is there then i need to do is i need to get the password the password will be uh, json date or we can do it simply this way we will say the password is equal to json data dot get uh, user uh, form data dot username so if by default it will be an empty one so we don't have to worry about it we'll just simply check if the password is there if the password is there uh, then yeah you're allowed to probably return it you can say yeah this password is there and you are getting it if the password is not there we we'll just throw or like we'll say return none right return none uh, this is if the password is not there right if the password is not there that means that the users are not indicated wrong username or password re enter ideally we have to throw this as part of our uh, access like we need to throw it as part of our return itself but let's say this, this thing works i will just say this thing works cut this over up and fire it up go here click. all right so the login portion is here i want to test this out now let's go and try to Okay, the username i'm going to enter the username here basically i want to try to get the username i'll put something like this uh, Bharat. something it's not that the password is uh you put password all right that's nothing else just have to execute it let's see how it does it's returning a null but rather i wanted to throw like uh i wanted to throw an error i want to throw like not authenticated error so let's quickly check it um possibly here yeah my guy is here okay it's what i wanted to throw okay it's throwing http exception that's what i want actually i want to raise an http exception which is going to be 400 in active okay incorrect username my password is exactly what i want uh it's http exception is coming as part of the fast api it's a full rate uh, it's going to be here okay so i want to raise an http exception http exception takes what it takes two things i guess it takes the status code and the detail so the status code uh, is 400 and the message or what is detail is incorrect username or password awesome so pretty much what i wanted right i want to raise if the password is incorrect if not they'll just flow through and just return the username as my token pretty much what i want let's quickly check this out now and let's go here close this up for now restart it and try it out username is going to be Bharat. Okay, Bharat. password is going to be password password and let's execute all right it's throwing a 400 undocumented why is it 400 undocumented what is the uh, unauthenticated no. uh, 
wrong username password error status code i think it's 403 403 is the correct one 403 guys on 400 the document itself is wrong the yeah, 400 is usually considered as like a client error so 400 and above right 500 and above is so as i said all right so that's pretty much it uh, we got it working let's re enter and retry it um let's check it here all right so i want to test it here now i want to test the username so some password right bharat and password is also bharat if i authorize it it should say all right awesome so it's saying author or forbidden now if i enter the password username from here uh, let's say this is the username i'm entering and the password is going to be this one is it allowing let's check yes got it so this is allowing and uh, pretty much what i wanted to get so it's now now uh, the access token if you if you go here and print access token uh, we'll be getting the access token data probably as the user itself all right so if you go inside this now and if printed the access token you should be getting the token and we'll test it that's that out fire it up that's actually a simple hot reload kind of a mechanism for fast api as well and let me let me uh, try to find that so it's bharat what is the correct username correct username is bharat1 bar1234 or and password is code or monk authorize it all right so authorized let's go and find out the get one it's actually saying it's locked so that means that i need to be authenticated to all right so what is it printing so it's printing the username which is going to be the token that's what exactly you want now it's very much easy from here i'm going to be using three more json files or oh no two more json files one for the span history and one for the credit card history so we're moving to the second phase now we're going to be building the span history and credit card history portion let's do it so span history and i'll just clone the same for the credit card history as well credit card uh, history right credit card history is going to be uh, credit history and it's going to take the token nothing more than token it's going to be string depends on oauth scheme all right now we're going to be using the same um, like we're going to be creating another json file couple of json files one is going to have the uh, spend uh, history json all right and the next one is going to have um oh, oh sorry another file it's going to have a file is going to be called credit history oh sorry history this is enough all right we have the credit history and spend history so both of these are going to be basically a json file so let's start filling this value up so what exactly is it going to be the value for this so we will have probably a, like an nested json we will say the username here and uh, we will say the monthly spend so from the day of spend so probably let's say i won't have six months of spend right let's keep having a rolling kind of a month uh, instead of probably i would say that from the date of creation probably you can keep it that as well we'll keep it as from the date of the account creation you'll try to track the spend history um month of january let's say jan and we'll say the spend history as uh, uh we'll have another value inside it we'll say uh, uh total spend uh, probably 15450 uh, liabilities liabilities is uh, uh liability is fine liability spelling mistakes no spelling mistakes liability is about 4000 bucks and uh, asset i will say asset how much of asset was created probably 1300 very bad kind of a person so this username is goard is going to be filled right so i'll say bar 1 2 3 4 this is going to be the username and we'll just keep on rolling this data for every single month so i want to have the next last five months right i'll try to do it for the last five months so jan feb March and uh, April and May is there any more I have June as well 
all right so you have the spanish tree for the first person uh, we can close this up and we can actually do the same for a couple of more users as well so this user should be present um, in the user db so this is something that we are actually loading up probably if you can call it hard coding if you want to we'll have the second user here and the user is going to be pause 1872 and pretty much done the next one is going to be not the username but this one and let's do it it's going to be iot5 12 and probably another one right so i need to have one more uh, let's load it here friends spend history all right so this is going to be the four different uh username and the values that i'm going to have the spend history i'm going to have i'm going to try to do the same like i'm going to try to uh, have the same json or like i'm going to use the same format for credit history as well the credit card history on the other hand will just have what is the credit card balance and how much was paid and uh, uh, we'll not load we'll not keep or we can even do that we can do load the uh, rolling balance of that month as well So for the credit history, let's do the same as well. So uh, like I said, I'm going to have uh, uh, the username. The username is going to have what was the credit card balance, how much was paid and what was the rolling balance for that. So like it will keep on rolling for the end month that way. What was the, what was the money that I had to pay, what was paid and what is the balance for that month. Let's do the same thing. Uh, let's go for the same structure, uh, username. And I'm going to be having uh, three fields here it's going to be credit uh, balance let's give it a number let's say that it was uh, probably four five double zero and what was paid credit paid totally thousand five hundred credit uh, rolling or like remaining balance right so 3000 i don't know if it's the correct term or anything of that sort let's give it a name now let's the name is going to be bar one two three four all right let's do the same stuff again here i will do the comma all right let's do d d d so control d will probably do it for you quickly do it iot you can change the data inside later like as part of our application so when you need it we need separate data we can do it after that all right so pretty much done we have uh, we have the spend history the credit history and user db three things created let's quickly go in and work on that as well here uh, we're going to be now uh, press spend history logic so we'll now read it from open uh, this is going to be spend read spend hist and we're now going to read it right spend hist data is equal to json dot load uh, spend hist and uh, probably this is where we'll now try to return the spend history right so we'll just say spend history data uh, no i'll say uh, username uh, it's going to be token because token will have a username so in in ideal space you will convert a token we'll have like a reversal logic how you build the token from the uh, username similarly you will reverse the logic to build the username from the token and you'll return it there but now i don't have to do that i'll just say the username is going to be the token because that's what we are returning from here uh, from where here this one because that's the access token and what i'm going to do now is uh, username is token and the spend history is going to be I just say uh, the spend history data of uh, token. All right, so this is this is pretty much it. That's what I'm just returning my data right here. So we are done. We can actually do one thing here. We can now check if uh, if 
not spend history meaning that uh, it's not spend history no, sorry spend history data dot get of token if it's coming out null if the user is not there let's write a http exception the status code is 400 this is okay fine right uh, i'm just saying that uh, uh, username not found in the spend history uh, db if there is an unauthenticated user that's trying to get access probably not but if he does that this is going to throw an error so similar logic again for our credit history as well let's go do that probably copy pasting is the easiest way here and i'm just going to change it to credit history or json and credit history and uh, spend history sorry Alright, so pretty much it. So we are handling all the non non activities and stuff like that here. Credit history, credit history, spend history. Alright, so we completed a couple of things here. Login portion is done, spend history is done, credit history is done. Let's quickly fire up the server and check if that's working. Go here, refresh it, make sure to get authorized first. It's going to be bar. I'm the user, right? One, two, three, four and i don't need anything more and the user password is going to be i think yeah go to more authorize authorized all right let's go and check the spend history try it out i don't need to get anything awesome oh yes i'm getting the spend history for the months amazing so i'm getting for jan feb march april may june awesome right let's check the uh, credit history as well what what is the credit history what am i how am i giving it why am i keeping it in this way okay i made a mistake here it should have another field and yeah this is it i need to keep it that's what that's the mistake i made right uh it should be in this fashion on jam Feb. Oh, that's oh, the history is for that month alone. No? Okay, 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 okay. I think I got, I got it. I figured it out. All right, my bad, my bad, my bad. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, cool. All right, all right. So how this works is, what is the credit balance for that spending month? Like, no, there is no credit history. Let's not go for that because credit history is basically like, what is the credit balance? How much you paid? What's the rolling balance uh, of the last transaction? So that's what we have to load it here. So you're just going to say the same, probably, I guess. This is what we're going to saying, right? We are saying it is going to be uh, credit history. All right, let's cut it and load it up properly and make sure to refresh it. Authorize bar, bar one, two, three, four, uh, code or monk. Authorize, authorized. Let's go check our probably couple of ones. Spend history, execute. Do we are getting okay? We're getting it for Jan Feb March. Spend history is there. Credit history is uh, probably again in the get call, execute okay it says internal server error what exactly is the error what's it saying uh, credit history to, oh, okay i made a mistake again okay all right does it fire up i don't know okay it's fired up let's uh authorize it's not uh, it's not authorized before code um, Authorize it. Check it back. I'm going to check the credit history, right? Execute it. Okay, another entry server. What is happening? No such file or. Oh, oh, why oh, is it not picking up? Okay, no, it should. I think I didn't restart the server. My bad. Bar 124. Coder. Coder monk. Authorized. Authorized. Work properly now. 
talking about it also that history or again call it credit card balance should be the correct one credit balance is uh, credit balance is the amount in INR probably credit paid what is paid and what is the rolling balance awesome so we have done the three portions now you got login you got the spend you got the credit history and we do now have to work on uh probably coming up with an uh, the final portion which is going to be transferring money so i'm going to have like a method uh, that's probably going to do basically nothing complex than just transfer money it's going to take the username obviously from the token and it's also going to take the account balance of the f- uh, source or the account balance of the uh, final person so what exactly do we need here we need to have like a spend history credit history user db is fine now i need to have another db um, that possibly is going to have um, user balance dot json this is going to be the main json file where the user's balance everything is going to be tracked so i could have done it in a simple way like get the username uh have like a complex json where the credit history is there spend history is there things like that but for the purpose of this making it as simple as possible so that in the future if i want to change i can work it with it easily like modular is so modularized now that i if i if there is some fix that i want to do for spend history i can go fix it in spend history that's pretty much i can add a column do anything i want that so that's why i wanted to have three separate files in ideally you won't have this you can consider these as tables of the same db uh you'll have like an uh, table having uh, some kind of transitive uh, relationship between tables itself that's pretty much how you do it okay this is going to be the uh, user balance db so this is going to be having uh, the current balance and that's pretty much it it's going to have just the current balance i'll probably put it as 15600 and uh, nothing more than that uh, because uh, we don't have to show the credit history we don't have to show the spend history because that's already being tracked in another json file uh, let's uh, do the same stuff here again um uh, right all right so we have the four values of the four users and what exactly is the username or what exactly is the current balance for them 2600 is fine let's make this post guy very rich and this guy very very rich and this guy very poor i don't know why do you even say that all right so uh, yeah pretty much uh, the user balance is created now we are going to be working on a simple method here that's going to be another uh, post method it's going to be post method where we're going to do is we're going to say on transfer uh, transfer money probably right transfer money transfer money is just one word or right, so the transfer money is now going to take the account username of this final destination account that's going to be the username for that guy and uh, again ideally we will have the username will convert into token and none of this will be like this the username won't come out in an ideal setup this will be an hashed username so we'll have another mechanism to hash our usernames and that's how everything works but we are going to take the token obviously so that's that's the token that we want and we'll just do that right here and the token is going to be what is going it's going to be the username uh the final destination is going to come via the body so what i need is the um destination id or user and it's going to be via the body it's going to be string obviously it's dr it's going to be via the body So what exactly happens is that the destination user will will actually be giving it as part of a key, and we'll have the token already taken destination user alone. And what is the money also? The money also will be as part of the key. So amount to transfer that will be like a float, and uh, again we have the body. So amount to transfer destination. Do we need IFSC code? Probably not. 
let's let's see how that goes so we have a token destination amount to transfer all right so let's print the token obviously just to for our debugging purpose destination user and amount to transfer so what we're going to do now is open obviously the user balance or oh, let's user balance json as read as user balance uh, data user balance file it's called user balance data data is going to be json.load user balance file all right so user balance data is now there and you need to check if the token um, okay it should be obviously that right so we'll say uh, current user balance so your current user balance is car user bal it's going to be user balance of data of or get the token the token and pretty much inside that we have another one right so it's going to be the current balance current balance I'll log it uh current user balances all right current user balance done and uh, destination user balance it should be test user bal balance data dot get of uh, destination user okay if destination user is not there not throw an exception raise http exception you say the error code on the status code is 400 our uh, detail is uh, destination user is not present in the db cannot transfer money all right awesome okay if destination is now there what do you need is the destination user balance so uh, probably keep it as uh, dest user dest user bal probably in the next line uh, dest, dest user bal will be dest user of card balance Right, so we got the destination user balance as well. Quickly print it. Destination user balance. Uh, yeah, got it. So we need to now just take the money from this guy, subtract it from him, add it to this guy. Also, subtract it from the current user and add it to the destination user. How do you do that? Um, we can actually we need to actually redump it or like we need to reload the file itself. So how you do it? is basically write it on top of it that's pretty much how you will do it in in json file so what we need to do is we need to change the value itself so i want what i want to check is um, i want to check first of all if the current user balance minus the amount to transfer first we'll make it as a float of uh, yeah it's not a problem I want to check if the current user balance minus the amount to transfer is uh, is, is is greater than zero first. So I, I don't want to um, go for a negative balance. If it is not greater, than, if it's less than zero, um, throw an error. Status code 400. Detail. Amount to transfer is greater than Account balance cannot transfer. All right, another server assumption. If it is not, then we go ahead and do it. How we do it? We are going to be now changing the data itself of the uh, user balance data. So we have already loaded it there. So what are you going to say? Is probably something like this. 
I would have want to redump it without opening the file. So let me actually create it like this. It's going to be a uh, nun. Let's set it out. I've done all the calculation. I'm directly now going to just change the value and open a file in write mode and redump the entire file. So that's what I'm going to do, right? So I'm going to say user balance of a token of a current current right. current current balance current balance is equal to user balance data of a destination user of current balance ah uh, no should be minus this plus that minus equal to amount to transfer you said plus equal to amount simple and now i'll do is with open user balance to json in write mode as a user balance right user balance dot write dot uh, json dot Use a balance right. Use a balance data. Make sure that methods are right. It's the uh, object first, and then the file pointer. Object first, and then the file pointer. All right, so we're pretty much done, I guess. So this should work. I'm guessing this should work. What is why? Why? Why does it say this? Local variable not used. Okay, I guess that's because already being used. Um, all right. So interesting to see what is going to happen now. All right. So let's print it and now test it out. It's time to test it out. Probably right. That's the final. That's like the revealing moment. You never know. You write a lot of code and you you don't even know if it's going to work. hope to god that it works all right so first thing authorize it bar 1 2 3 coder monk authorize it authorize now you go to your transfer money portion try it out and you say destination user um from here right so i need to have destination user from here so pause one and the money i'm going to transfer is um probably 5000 right and i'm going to execute it what does it throw an error it throws an error what does it say so it says an unhashable type dict um unhashable type dict what exactly does that mean unhashable type dict plus equal to unhashable type dict oh i think i can or Add it this way. All right. So what I need to do is I need to. But how did this pass from here? It went subtracted. Did it subtract? Okay. It picked up everything. But it says unhashable type detect destination user car balance. I'll quickly print the user balance till now, so we'll know for sure. I'm actually surprised that it went past this line. So that means that it does work, but why does it not work for the next line? Let's quickly try it out. Authorize it first. Okay, authorize it. Close it. Come back. So I'm going to try it out. This destination not there, but it's there. Money is going to be. Five thousand executed. Why? 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 Okay, okay. Subtracted. 
but why is it not subtracting from this guy bharat user name ah i think i missed out no, i'm not missing out anything user is there unhashable typed dict post one to right why does it not work here unhashable typed Type error, Nashville type dict. What does it say? Why? Alright. I'm saying that. Oh, I think the 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 data from the destination user is not proper. What is the user from? destination user i'm printing the token i'm printing the destination user yeah so i'm not trying to hash a dict here it right? is so a destination user ah i got i am actually getting the value from here it's a mistake got it got it got it uh it should be destination user from the from the queue past all right good work let's see let's see let's see come here Close this up. Uh, authorize it. Or hold on. Authorize first for authorize. Close it. Transfer money. Trying to transfer money now. Now, user transfer money to this guy. I'm gonna transfer probably five thousand bucks. Execute. All right. It returns a null. Probably I should probably return. awesome right awesome it did work i didn't have to do anything i have to now return if nothing happens no exception i need to return username a uh, token message a uh, money money amount to transfer successfully transfer spelling mistake don't make spelling mistakes guys okay so we have constructed the entire thing right oh my god it's amazing that we could do it in 45 minutes probably less than a half i was expecting in half at least Okay, so we've done bo- almost the entire stuff. Like we have the basic structure of the backend ready. We have four phases created: the login phase, a module, and the get spend list history module. It'll have like a five six month spend history of every single user, and we have the credit history card, meaning that the, that month or the last paid credit uh, history. What was the balance? What was paid? And what is the rolling balance? follow the transfer money portion where you you make a request to transfer money to you along with the uh, destination user and the amount to transfer it is going to be a float uh, you will be now able to transfer the money uh, from one user to another and uh, pretty much what you expect now what we can do is also have few other getter methods basically like i want to get the method get method for the money in my account so I just create a simple getter method so we can use that as well so what i'll do is i'll write amplet get these are going to be like simple methods um uh user balance and it will be def get user balance it will be having a token string uh, depends or scheme and it just say with open uh, user balance so json read as user bal user bal is equal to user bal to user file always in the meters file if user balance uh, not get token if not raise that exception guys that is code 
போன்ற யூசர் நேம் நாட் பிரசன்ட் இன் த யூசர் நேம் நாட் பிரசன்ட் நீங்கள் யூசர் பேலன்ஸ் டிபி எல்ஸ் ரிட்டர்ன் யூசர் நேம் current balance is equal to user balance and get a token of uh, car balance all right pretty much done you have a getter method and call it as getter method getters we don't have any setter method because we don't need to set anything we this this could be a setter method probably you can say that setting some values but that's the only post method that we have no more post methods just get and post uh, nothing complex that they're doing here click quickly test everything out before you close up and have like a final say on what is happening all right we're going to test every single method now uh, refresh it uh, first of all authorize it uh like okay, let's try first without authorizing anything i would try to try this i don't think it will even work without authorization uh, all right all right not authenticated um try it out not authenticated like expected um probably boss 234 10 box, box execute not authenticated like expected and the getter should also not work right uh, close it close it close it all right this should also not work um okay not that authenticated all right so now let's try in a different user because we're trying the same one right so we can not uh, let's try probably this guy uh, iot and what's the password for this guy internet level authorized authorized uh try to get the spanish tree now for this guy um, execute it got the spanish tree amazing uh, credit history all right we get in credit history as well and transfer money now i'm going to transfer this to pause 1234 pause 1872 uh, let's try to try to friends friend and friends user balance is what 1600 and iot is is what i is a rich guy right so we can transfer probably like 1 lakh 1 2 3 4 all right let's try try transferring this much money money is yes, transferred amazing now this guy is also rich oh my god this guy is certainly rich all right uh, final step is to get the user balance now and right? get the user balance execute it amazing now it says that voila this guy's user balance is a lakh and 15600 cool oh, sorry it's 1 crore 15600 rich 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 no 10 lakh 15600 yeah why is it one bro 10 lakh 15600 amazing guys so i've completed five different uh, get methods and four important modules uh, this is going to be the server i'm going to have the server run in a in like a local host leave it as such and start building on my application so let's have a simple round up right now do do i want to have that mystery look all right guys so we did build the fast api server thanks so much for actually being part of this uh this is like literally fun for me i spent about an hour to build the entire stuff and like i said we're going to be using this server as the base or the backbone for our flutter as well as kiwi flutter versus kiwi challenge because we're going to be building the same application using these two different toolkits to find out which is good and what are the pros what are the cons and everything along the way it's going to be a fun series so make sure you guys are staying subscribed and watching me on that uh this video is coming out probably today starting from tomorrow is going to be the challenge if you guys are interested to know more about it have a detailed video stay subscribed because i'm going to be releasing an uncut video series uh in the following week so that's what is coming up right in this channel see you guys out there until then spark peace out have a super awesome day